There are approximately 350 islands which make up the Gunayala region, also known as the San Blas. Of these 350 islands, approximately only 50 are occupied. From our anchorage we could see Teardoop Island in the distance, and we're told it was a great island to explore, as it had some unoccupied Guna houses on it, as well as a beautiful beach. Arriving in Teardoop, we are reminded why coconuts are the main export from the Guniyala region. We wander through the maze of trees, mindful of the possibility of being hit by a falling coconut. For the boys, their temptation to climb in is irresistible. As we explore, we see some buildings amongst the trees. The Guna still lives their ancestors did in small wooden shacks made of bamboo sticks tied together by the posts and roof of palm leaves. It's dug out, paired with tin. is large logs which have various uses and hammocks for beds. Well, are they all going to the coconut? So you see here what they do is they collect the coconuts and then they export them. The Colombian trading boats come and collect them and take them and then they get made into all our coconut oil. products. Coconut oil, coconut milk. We're surprised by how simple the construction is and the interior layouts. It's not safe to be all right around these coconut trees. We loved running and playing on the wide open beach. We came across some more houses on the other side of the small island. These houses were built using more modern building materials, like tin sheeting for the roofs and makeshift plastic tubing for guttering. Guna law prohibits outsiders from owning property in the district. A conscious move to ensure limitations on tourism in the region. The law also prevents foreigners from speculating in real estate and driving up living costs. Today, all the lodgings are 100% owned and managed by Guna families and are fairly uniform in offering and quality. So you won't find any large luxury hotels in this paradise. These Kiyakos are very important to the Guna people, probably a bit like how important our cars are to us. They use them to go fishing every day as well as to get to the mainland where they grow their vegetables close to the rivers. The Gunas are very able seamen and they can paddle for miles on these small canoes, sometimes in very rough conditions. Some of them have started using sails to help them get to where they are going quicker. When we got back to Mokara and noticed a squad of squid around the anchor chain, so we lowered the GoPro in so we didn't disturb them. We counted 50 of them down here. Um, how much? 50. 50. 50. 
there's not as many boats here, so they have to sell it for more. So he tries to charge us fifty dollars for a little bit of bananas, kuna bread, some kuna bread. And did we get all the little tinsy ones? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but in fairness, I mean, there were a lot of. They moved your head out of the sun. There were a lot of, a lot of lobsters. Yes, in there, I know. Actually. Well, I didn't want that but many. No, I only we didn't wanted want that four. Many. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to spend fifty dollars on our first kuna experience. But I mean, but we spent twenty instead. This could probably be a bit small. Two of these could feed Dad. Yeah. It's a bit small, don't you? Show me naked. Show, show, mummy. So these guys. Yeah, so we could put some in the freezer. Oh, my God, he's stuck. We got medium sized ones. He's trying to tickle me. <laughs> these are small compared to the ones we had in the Caribbean. Yeah, they were. They were big, the ones. And those were Caribbean. $10 each, or were they $5 each? $5 each. Here you go. Okay. Wished until your heart's content. Let's see what you got there. Wow. The next day was Nathan's 10th birthday. Day to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nathan. Wow, that's awesome. Happy birthday to you. I was surprised when I got a surfboard. It was exactly what I wanted. For my birthday, I got to choose exactly what I wanted to do. So of course there was no school and lots of above and below the water activities. I can never get bored of snorkelling. There's always so much to see and explore. I love spotting fish I've never seen before. Nathan also chose to go back to Tia Dube to paddle on his new surfboard. We've just spotted a shark in the shallows here. Apparently he swam under Dylan's board. He's chasing a big barracuda apparently. We later realised that the shark was not trying to catch the barracuda, but the barracuda was trying to get a free meal by tailing the shark and picking up on its prey. We then went off to meet some friends for a paddle on Quinquendu. They had a very cool Spanish spaniel who loves the water and has some great dreadlocks. I have no idea what it was. On our walk around the island, we discovered an old used life raft, which had washed up. This obviously got us imagining all sorts of things, like had this saved someone's life out at sea and was now washed up here on this remote island? Of course, no day is complete until we squeeze in a last snorkel.
Phil's fishing again. We literally just reeled in a jack. Well, and he's onto something else. Wow, he is a big one. That, that is a big fish. We want to weigh that. Do you want to get the weighing scales? Come on, Nathan. Go grab the weigh scale. Quick, he's bleeding. The sharks are coming. Bring the line to me. He's heavy. Nathan, grab the leader line. Grab the leader line. Get him on the back step. Nathan can't carry him. He's too heavy. <gasps> There's a morning, a morning entertainment in San Blas. Nice rainbow. The next morning, we went out to the outer reef to dive on an old wreck. These wrecks are heaven for small fish, who love the very hiding places, like this li cute little Blenny, who is defending his home. It was our first real wreck snorkel and there were so many different fish and corals. It was really fun and beautiful. We also came across a sleeping nerf shark under a ledge. Barbecue Island is one of the most well known amongst cruisers in the San Blas. It got its name from a number of barbecues that get held there. Normally, when someone has caught a fish too big to eat alone, then they bring it to the island and have a large beach barbecue and share it with everyone that comes. It also has a fantastic shallow sandy ledge that leads off to the beach for about 80 metres. On our way back to Makaro, we stopped at our friend's boat Rafiki to watch the sharks eat a fish carcass. Within minutes of the carcass being in the water, the sharks arrived. They circled it a few times before pulling off the rope. Next day we had some gooners visiting us. We traded some fresh water, rice, lentils and money for a couple of crayfish they had caught. A glass, a cup, yeah. Um, do we have the... Any? Take away. You, or do they want small bottles? Your English is good, huh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> um, hang on, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mum and Dad, why are you sitting here? Because it's the coolest spot on the boat. <laughs> got wind? Uh, yeah, it's got a bit of wind. No sun? 
And no seams. And no seams. <laughs> Why are you sitting here? Because this is my seat. No, it's not. It's mine. <laughs> Why are you sitting here? Because Dad stole my seat. What's going on here, mm, boys? Um, I'm scratching Bob's back. Why? I'm not because he scratches mine. Because there's so many no seams or bites, they just need the pain relief. Oh, not shame. I'm trying to move anchor so that we get away from the no seams. But sadly, our chain seems to be caught on a rock. Sean dives down to free the chain. It's a long free dive. Well done, we got it free. Whew. Yeah, that's great news. No diving so and off no to our next anchorage. Shortly after we drop anchor, the rain starts with a very impressive lightning show. We hate lightning. Having a large aluminium mast sticking up into the air when there is lightning is always a bit worrying. We've heard of so many boats being struck in this part of the world during the lightning season. In our next episode, we picked up over 100 kilograms of plastic on the beautiful beaches. We catch massive crayfish, and we have a beach barbecue party. If you like our videos and would like to support us, please take a look at our Patreon page. The link is in the text below. Your support will help us buy better recording and editing equipment and it will also help us continue on our adventure.